Most are saying that prices are going to level off uh, for 2021. I think that that might be true overall, but there's going to be some frothy markets that are continuing to go up. Coming to you with another video. Hope you had a happy holidays. I'm right back at it. Took a little break over the holidays on doing some videos. I'm going to start posting a lot more of my analysis of the market, what's going on in the market. Here in Steamboat, which has been record sales, things have been just continuing since the summer to go crazy. But, uh, you know, what we have going on, hiring some more people, some new people on my team to go out there and really help us find more inventory and connect with more builders, more portfolio holders, and feed more product to our funds that need more homes to supply housing, mostly affordable housing, to be honest. Most of the housing stock that we are doing are really in that more entry-level homebuyer range. It's just people who are deciding to rent for a lot of reasons. Sometimes they can't find a house or find uh, to buy, so they're finding a house to rent. And I think that's a big thing that we should be looking at and really looking at really the low, low end of the market where there's a lot of people that are being displaced from homes that aren't home buyers that are renters it's gonna be interesting to see what happens there so i'll talk about that more later but let's talk about the home uh the core logic home insights or home price insights for november so prices up in november year over year at 8.2 percent it's really interesting to see that number that's a crazy number most are saying that prices are going to level off uh for 2021 i think that that might be true overall but there's going to be some frothy markets that are continuing to go up that were more affordable markets in the past that are really hot. It's interesting because a month ago, they were saying prices were only going to go up about 1% for 2021. Now they're saying 2.5%. November of 2019, year over year, was only 3.7%. So we've seen one of the biggest year over year increases since 2014. That's a, a big deal. And you know, typically home prices do fall during recessions. So those who say that's not true are wrong. But typically in a recession, besides the last great recession, home prices only fall between zero and 5%. Well, we saw home prices going up 8%. So while they do fall, I don't consider 5% decline in home prices a crash in any sense. And we're not even close to that. If you talked to me in March, I would have thought about that much more. So look at some of the home tiers. So prices in year over year, in the lowest price home tier went up 12%, which is no surprise. The low to middle was up 10%. The middle to moderate was up 9.3%. And the high price homes, luxury homes were up 8.4%. So that's across the board. Home prices are up. That lowest affordable price range is really what's affecting the affordability of a lot of home buyers. Mortgage rates help this a lot. So a lot of people are talking about how the mortgage rates really cause the increase in appreciation. I guess you can say that happened to a certain extent, but think about all of the millennials and the Gen X that are driving the home sales. There's 15 million 28 to 30 year old millennials who haven't even hit the home buying market, which will in the next few years. So I predict this happening for a while. There's a huge demand for homes and it's just gonna keep happening. So some of the top states, Idaho, Maine, Indiana, Montana, Arizona, somewhere around 16, 12 to 16% in those states. And if you really uh, look at some of these other markets like a Memphis, you know, all these markets in Indiana and Montana Montana and Idaho, you know, people are moving to these places that aren't necessarily the most affordable places anymore. It's just a better place to live. So that demand is going to be there. I mean, between 2018 and 2028, they're figuring household growth is going to increase by 12 million. Those are people who need a house to live in. So they build for rent, uh, luxury apartments, mid-tier apartments, single family homes, all those areas are going to see a lot of growth. I'm going to break this down in inventory in another video, but it's crazy. So a lot of things out there happening. Definitely no crash happening, I think, obviously, but it's going to be interesting to see how the next year goes with the home builders increasing their inventory with single family rental uh, developers and funds starting to build their own developments. The need for housing is there and it's going to continue. So leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Tell me what your goals are for 2021. Mine are to uh, increase my team, find more inventory and really help our clients. So uh, let me know what you're up to for 2021, what your needs are in real estate and in general. And I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.